Okay, welcome back to our ongoing look at the uh, X-Wing Miniatures game. And we're still uh, early, comparatively speaking, in the first edition. Uh, this is Wave 6, and this is a, a turning point in the game. I believe this was February of 2015, if the internet is correct. And it always is, we all know that. Um, wave 6 introduces a new faction to the game. Up until now, we've been... Uh, uh, we've been looking at expansion packs and playing matches between the Galactic Empire and the Rebel Alliance. Well, Wave 6 brings us the third faction, Scum and Villainy. And that represents your smugglers, your bounty hunters, and your space pirates in the Star Wars universe. Uh, this faction can uh, fight uh, matches against Imperials or against Rebels. So now we sort of have a rock, paper, scissors element going on. By the end of the first edition, it's going to be rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. And I don't know what you would call what's happening in the second edition. There are seven different factions in the uh, second edition, but uh, it's capped at five in the first. Up to this point, wave six, we now have three expansions, Scum and Villainy. And just a quick look, the artwork is different on the maneuver dial. A little more uh, brown than the Imperial Black or the uh, Rebel Alliance Red. And this symbol is important. That's actually the uh, uh, the Mythosar symbol on uh, Boba Fett's Mandalorian armor. So that represents scum and villainy uh, in the X-Wing miniatures game. Okay? All right. I don't even know where to start. There's This is a huge expansion pack. It's called Most Wanted. Okay? And I couldn't tell you whether this is rare whether this is hard to find on the internet today or on the uh, secondary market, because uh, I picked this up in that huge lot off Facebook Marketplace, and I had no idea it was included. Uh, I also had no idea that the, everything that came with it was included in the lot. Uh, it was several months later before, after inventorying everything, I discovered, wow, this was a much, much, much better deal than I thought, because uh, that, that one sale... Uh, off Facebook Marketplace, which I wouldn't recommend. That's a very dangerous way to do business. Um, nonetheless, uh, incredible deal. I, you know, 65 to 70% of the entire X-Wing Miniatures game first edition uh, I got for maybe uh, one-twelfth the cost of the entire first edition at retail, okay? So I, I couldn't tell you if this is rare or not. Uh, I, I, it's probably expensive because there's a lot of stuff in here. You're th we, you get three... Ship models, and these are repaints, all three of them, and we'll have a look at them. And six maneuver dials, a ton of player cards, uh, or pilot cards, I guess we should say. Pilot tokens, uh, and uh, some new upgrades. Not so much in the way of tokens, uh, cardboard tokens, though. Very, very scant on those. You'll notice no numerals, no number tokens, and that was true with Wave 5 as well. Maybe the manufacturers of this game were getting the hint that players were getting swamped with those little number tokens, and at this point, maybe they could cool off on that. That might be what happened there. But we'll start with the uh, ship model. So you, in this expansion, uh, you got the uh, a new Y-wing and two new Z-95 headhunters. Okay, and there's nothing in the Star in the in Star Wars canon, old or Disney, that says that uh, these ships cannot or are, are restricted exclusively to the Rebel Alliance. Okay. Uh, the smugglers and the space pirates and the bounty hunters get their hands on these as well, you know, customize them or whatever, and, and use them for own, their own nefarious purposes. So we'll start with the Y-Wing. And now, a little gripe. Yes, I bought this secondhand. Yes, uh, this is a uh, a used product, but when I put the uh, uh, ship in the stand, I felt a, or I saw a little piece of the plastic glued to the uh, uh, little ta uh, base here on the uh, ship itself chip off and fly off. That's going to give me trouble in the years to come. Uh, it's still working, but you, you can sort of see it's only halfway there now. And it's it, at this point, it is still kind of sort of functioning. Mm, yeah, well, yeah, it's disintegrating on me. Uh, this, this sucks, pals. And this is uh, one of the reasons that Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures game is not uh, the most popular game in the universe is because these these miniatures are just so fucking fragile and uh, this is also the reason when you find these secondhand loose a lot of times the uh, players have just 
taken this part off and, and stuck a metal uh, magnetic thing on it so you can put a ball magnet on the uh, stand and, and play the game with those. I don't like that, but I see the truth of it. I understand why they do it. But the ship model itself, a new paint job, looks pretty sweet. Uh, you'll note the astromech droid socketed in there has a yellow dome. That's pretty cool. Nice, nice sculpting. My nacelles or my engine ports back there are a little bent. You can see they don't true up exactly. But again, I bought this used. Um, I like the uh, the wash, I like the, the engine burn on that. They did a good job painting it. They just did a crappy job designing this connection port on all of these. I mean, these, these stands really suck. I mean, that, there's there's no way around that. Okay, so that's the uh, Y-Wing. And again, this is probably going to give me trouble in the future. Uh, I'll probably have to come up with a different solution. I'm only going to show you one of the Z95s because they're identical. And again, the Z95 was introduced in Wave 4, I believe. And it's not an X-Wing. It's the precursor to an X-Wing. It only has two laser cannons rather than four. And I don't think... Yeah, the, we, we, there's no uh, S-foil... Uh, capability on this thing. It does have four engines, though. And this uh, paint this paint job on it is uh, pretty sure that's made up with the... I think that's the Black Sun logo. Black Sun are a syndicate of space pirates in the Star Wars universe. And I don't know when that became part of the Legends canon, but I remember them from the Star Wars Galaxies role-playing game, the Black Sun Pirates. And uh, that's a, a neat paint application. It looks much different than the Rebel version of this. Uh, but if you only have the Rebel, the Rebel version and not the ship, why, well, you can just stick a Rebel ship on here and I think it would be fine. I don't know if the tournament rules lawyers would agree with that, but it looks okay. It's a neat little ship model. So you get three ship models with this pack. That's going to make it pretty expensive on its own. And, uh, well, it actually comes with six maneuver dials. You get two Y-Wing maneuver dials, two Z-95 Headhunter maneuver dials, and a Fire Spray 31 maneuver dial, which we've already seen one of those in the Imperial faction, and an HWK-290 maneuver dial, which we've already seen in the Rebel faction. This allows you to fly that the, uh, the ship from Boba Fett's expansion pack and uh, Kyle Katarn's uh, The Moldy Crow expansion pack uh, with this Scum and Villainy faction with well, not necessarily different pilots. Uh, there is a Boba Fett pilot included in this, but not a Kyle Katarn. But there are new pilots for these. But it doesn't come with those ship models. Otherwise, this would be a, a, a very expensive uh, expansion pack. Okay. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight small pilot uh, tokens for uh, different ships, including the uh, Moldy or the uh, HWK two hundred and ninety and two large. Uh, pilot card tokens for, or ship tokens, ship card tokens for the uh, fire spray patrol craft, okay? Which, again, does not come with the expansion pack. Uh, there's really nothing in the way of new rules to talk about with this particular expansion. It's a very small, uh, just a two-page pamphlet that comes with this. We already know about limited upgrades, modifications, and, and titles, and we already know about faction-restricted upgrades, but we now have the new third faction scum and villainy symbolized by the hide or the mythosaur skull on on that logo okay so we'll start looking at pilot cards and this is going to take a while there's quite a few of them and then we'll look at the upgrade cards okay so we'll start with the y-wing scum and villainy pilot cards we'll start with cavill this is a named it's limited you can only have one in your squad seven skill um i have not compared the capabilities the, the uh, ship upgrades with this with the uh, rebel upgrades but we get five with this this is a 24 squad point uh, sh uh pilot card so unique or um, elite upgrades the turret upgrades two torpedo upgrades and better check the back of this car yep it's a different type of astromech. This is like the R5 astro, even though these aren't all R5s. There's some R4s in here as well. It's, it doesn't say anything about that. Um, but, you know, I would have to go pull an R2-D2 card to see if, if I'm right about that. In fact, I'm gonna. Yep, I just checked the uh, backs of the cards of all the other uh, socket droids uh, in this game, and they are all represented by the... Uh, the round-domed R2, or perhaps even R3, 
uh, Astromechs, whereas uh, these new ones are, are, you might even be able to see on the card there, is the sort of flat domed R5 or R4s, and I guess those are considered aggro mechs, okay? And so this is a new type of uh, upgrade card. All right, so the Y-Wing can focus or target lock during the action activation phase. Now, Cavill's ability, when attacking a ship outside your firing arc, roll one additional attack die. That's very cool. And, of course, the Y-Wings can attack in a 360-degree firing arc around their ship because they have uh, the uh, onboard turrets uh, that you can load up on these things. Okay? Cool. That doesn't seem like a bad card at all. Next, skill level 5, we have Drea Renthal. Never heard of that character before. 22 squadron points. Fewer upgrades. Gets a turret upgrade, two proton torpedo upgrade, or two torpedo upgrades, and the new droid socket upgrade. Uh, after you spend a target lock, you may receive one stress token to acquire a target lock. Well, okay. Uh, it's not bad, but I can think of a, a dozen other uh, abilities that are better than that. Um, I don't like stressing my ships in this game. Sometimes it's very necessary to do. It just adds a sort of a cooldown element to the game, like in video games, where you, you know a certain amount of time must elapse or a certain number of rounds must elapse before you can use a, 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 a specific ability again. So that's all that really means. Okay, next. This is a, a generic, and there's two of these included. Hired Gun, skill level four, uh, no special text. Four upgrades, the same four upgrades as Drea, only 20 squadron points. That's actually really cheap for a Y-Wing. So that you could, you could, if you wanted to swarm some Y wings in a, in a scum and villainy faction, well, you can kind of sort of do it because look here, skill level two, Syndicate Thug. You get two of those in the expansion as well. Eighteen squadron points. That's that's on par with the A wings, I believe the the generic A wings, and you get four different upgrades, including two torpedoes. Not bad at all. Okay, so those are the new Y wing pilot cards that come with this most wanted expansion. Next, we'll start looking at the Z95 Headhunter uh, scum and villainy pilot cards. Skill level 7, we have Nadru Sulak. I trust I said that correctly. Uh, 17 squadron points. Uh, you get the elite upgrade, a missile upgrade, and the, uh, I, I call it the luck upgrade. I'm not quite sure. That's a credit symbol. A galactic credit symbol on the back of the uh, the card there. I, I, I call it the luck upgrades. Um, I'll show you the back of that card when it pops up. I don't know if we see... I think Han Solo might have come with a luck upgrade card. He certainly does in second edition, but uh, otherwise it's a new type of upgrade. Okay. When attacking, if there are no other friendly ships at range 1 to 2, roll one additional attack die. Hey, that's not bad at all, especially if you're, if you're flying a small squadron. Of course, with only 17 squadron points, uh, you can still put a modification card on this. It'd be hard to boost this up past 30, I think. Uh, but if you get caught short on the side of the map over here with some Imperials around you, you can do a little additional damage that way. Or, I say Imperials, or Rebels. Remember, now it's a three-faction game. All right, next up. We have Kato... Lichos, Kato Lichos, skill level 5, uh, elite upgrade, missile upgrade, and luck upgrade, 15 squadron points, remember these are the Z95s, these are low squadron point ships, at the start of the combat phase, you may remove one focus or evade token from another friendly ship at range 1 to 2, and assign it to yourself, if you're, if you're, well, no, I was about to say if you're using this with Kyle Katarn, but he's rebel faction, so that's not going to work. Uh, that's a neat, handy uh, card to have. It is situational. Well, most of the cards in this game are very situational. But uh, hmm. At the start of the combat phase, so if another ship uh, put on an evade token, say it's not in an enemy's uh, combat range, but it just put evade token on just in case, and then you're about to be fired on, uh, and you could really use that evade token, and it's within range one or two, your squad, your wingman, uh, while wow, you can transfer that evade token to this ship in that eventuality. So there is good use for that. It is situational. But okay, next. Okay, we have some generic pilots. Black Sun Soldiers. 
two of those come with this 13 squadron points uh, no special abilities can load up the missile upgrade and the luck upgrade or whatever the credit chip upgrade is called okay that's skill level three and uh the bin or the benayer benayer pilot or benayer i don't know how it's pronounced benayer pilot uh, skill level one for the z95 headhunter 12 squadron points that's the same as the academy pilot tie fighter okay uh two upgrades though uh a missile upgrade and the uh, uh the lucky seven upgrade whatever that is okay so and it doesn't tell me what that's called in these rules it doesn't it doesn't say chappy there's no mention of what this new uh what this new mechanic is and this was the one of the first maybe uh, there's four expansion packs in wave six for the uh, scum and villainy maybe one of those will explain it to us all right now we'll move on to the fire spray which is not included the ship model is not included in the set, but they wanted uh, uh, Scum and Villainy uh, pi uh, faction pilots to be able to run uh, the Fire Spray ship. So they've included some new pilot cards, including one for Boba Fett. Now you, you're going to say, wait a minute, Boba Fett is Imperial in this game. No, he's Imperial or Scum and Villainy at this point. Okay, you can fly him either one. Skill level 8. Uh, I think he has more upgrades on the Scum and Villainy card than he does on the Imperial card. Whatever this says is definitely better than the text on the Imperial uh, Boba Fett card because that's a, uh, a very, that just allows you to change, you know, lightning reflexes behind the, the, the joystick. It lets you change which direction you fly to after you remove the maneuver dial on that ship. This is better. 39 squadron points. When attacking or defending, you may reroll one of your dice for each enemy ship at range 1. That's great. That's great. That's going to be great if you're in close combat. If you're not, this doesn't do anything, but otherwise this is good. So what are the, uh, okay, so the fire spray, of course, can focus, evade, or target lock. Okay, Boba Fett can load, uh, well, he can load a title card, but it doesn't come with that particular title card. Um, maybe that will happen in the future? Or no, I bet you can put that title card on this, That I don't, think that title card is faction restricted so i believe that's how it works you can put a modification card on this probably the engine boost that's what i love putting on the uh, fire spray okay uh, elite upgrade secondary weapon upgrade i think that's the devices upgrade crew member upgrade yeah the uh, fire spray is a two-seater um, missile upgrade and the luck upgrade 39 squadron points now i didn't compare that with the imperial squadron point total i bet this is more simply because i believe it has more upgrades okay so of course back in the day anybody playing this game getting that preferred the imperial faction getting sick and tired of always losing as imperials are obviously going to jump ship to the scum and villainy faction so i'm sure boba fett was a welcome card in this expansion at the time okay next kath scarlet i believe that uh pilot was also available as an Imperial in this game. Skill level 7, 38 squadron points, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 upgrades, I think Boba Fett. Let's quickly count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, has the same upgrades as Boba Fett. 38 squadron points. When attacking a ship inside your auxiliary firing arc, roll one additional attack die. Now, auxiliary on the fire spray is backwards, okay? Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a neat card to have. All right. Next, we have Iman Azamine, and I recognize the name Azamine from the X-Wing Alliance uh, game from back in the late 1990s. That's a great game, by the way, and you can still, if you can get it to run on Windows 11, there's this great X-Wing Alliance upgrade player mod uh, that makes it look modern. Uh, it's a it's a great mod. I can't get it to work on my new computer. I'll, I'll keep trying, though. Okay, so 36 squadron points. Secondary weapon upgrade, devices upgrade, um, pilot upgrade, or crew member upgrade, uh, missile upgrade, and luck upgrade. When dropping a bomb, you may use the three hard left, three forward, or three hard right template instead of the one straight ahead template. That's sweet. That's very sweet. Uh, you can only load one device. But this allows you to use some of the more dangerous devices, like the proton bombs 
and some of those others that detonate and can also hurt you. The proximity mine's pretty easy to just get away from before anything happens, but yeah, that's a, that's a pretty neat uh, card right there. Okay, and now let's check this out. This is a generic, but it's a pretty high skill level generic. We have a Mandalorian Mercenary, skill level 5, with the same number of upgrades as Boba Fett, 35 squadron points. Ah, yeah. Uh, it hurts that it doesn't have any text, any any special abilities, but I mean, otherwise, if, if, if you want to run a fire spray and you've run out of points and Boba Fett is just too expensive, you could probably try to fit this in. Okay. Now, we've got four more pilot cards here. This is for the HWK290, what we've been calling the Moldy Crow. And uh, we'll start with Dace Bonearm. Dace, named after a fish. Uh... 23 squadron points, 4 upgrades, uh, elite, uh, turret, crew member, and luck. When an enemy ship at range 1 to 3 receives at least one ion token, if you're not stressed, you may receive one stress token to cause that ship to suffer one damage. You pair this up with a Y-wing you, you know, using the uh, ion uh, cannons or something like that. Mm, that looks like that could be very tasty. Uh, just a little because a uh, ionization only does one damage, regardless of the the power of the the weapon itself. But then, uh, if you want to uh, put a stress token on yourself, range one to three, that's pretty generous. You could uh, 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 cause some additional damage, and that's pat. I mean, the, the, you don't even have to be attacking when that happens. It just kicks in when uh, uh, the ionization occurs. That that's pretty good. Okay. Next. Skill level 5, we have Palab Gadalhi. Palab Gadalhi. Okay, I think I'm pronouncing, I trust I'm pronouncing that correctly. Only 4 upgrades. Elite, um, turret weapon, crew member, and luck. 20 squadron points. At the start of the combat phase, you may remove 1 focus or evade token from enemy ship at range 1 to 2 and assign it to yourself. Ooh, wee! Uh, that's a pirate right there, literally stealing your up your uh, your mitigations. That's cool. Or you could use that for attack as well at the start of the combat phase. So whoever goes first, it doesn't matter. You steal it within range one to two. That's cheeky. I like this card a whole lot. Okay. And uh, now I'm already beginning to see why people seem to flock. There, there, there seems to be. More people that play as the Scum and Villainy faction in, in X-Wing Miniatures than any other faction. Maybe maybe that bias I'm hearing about is, is, is what they claim it is, and maybe that's not hyperbole. Imagine that, hyperbole on the internet. Okay, skill level 3, Torkoal Mux. Only three upgrades. The uh, turret weapon, the crew member, and the luck. Plus a modification card. And a, if... You can't, I don't think you can put the Moly Crow. Well, maybe you can. I, I'm Moly Crow, that might be Rebel only. If it is, it'll say it on the card. But 19 squadron points. At the end of the activation phase, choose one enemy ship at range 1 to 2. Until the end of the combat phase, treat that ship's pilot skill value as zero. Oh, who would you use this for? Why, Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker, one of those high skill pilots. Uh, then they would if they're hurt, and normally they would take the first action, or the first combat, the first shot in battle, well, you could delay that and cause them to, you know, if other ships destroy them, then they lose their ability to fire. That's another, you know, and for 19 squadron points, that's, that's a strong card. Under the right conditions. Okay? And... This is a generic, skill level 1, 16 squadron points, a spice runner, and uh, 3 upgrades, uh, turret, crew member, and that's quite a few upgrades for a 16 squadron point card, and the luck or whatever it's called, and again, the, the, the paperwork doesn't tell me what that's called. Alright, so that's all the pilot, that's quite a few pilot cards that come with this ex expansion pack. Now, very quickly before we go into the... Uh, Upgrade cards. This comes with a set of target lock tokens, KK and LL. That's the uh, designation on these. That, that gets ridiculous as well. I think it goes all the way up to YY and ZZ in this first edition. 
one focus token, four stress tokens, and seven deflector shield tokens, okay? And at this point, most, most players already have plenty of deflector shield tokens if they're collecting these. Okay. Now, this expansion pack comes with, well, technically three title cards, but um, the Y-Wing title card is not unique, so you can load as many of these as you have. So we have the BTL A4 Y-Wing, zero squadron points, and it'll be self-evident why. You, obviously, you can only put this on a Y-Wing. You cannot attack ships outside your firing arc. Ooh, that seems very restrictive. After you perform a primary weapon attack, you may immediately perform an attack with the uh, turret weapon secondary weapon, okay? So, it's just change. Your, your primary cannons can only fire forward, okay? Uh, but... The uh, secondary weapon, the rear gunner, with the turret on the back, is has the ability to fire 360. So uh, this is actually a very good card to have at no cost. You uh, you literally get two attacks per round. One of them is only straight in forward firing arc, but the uh, the second attack can be 360 degrees. If your a target is in front of you, this turret weapon can also fire. This is a great upgrade if you're running and you can use this on rebel y wings as well this uh, this suddenly makes rebel y wings very very good okay and that's probably why it comes with two so you can put one on your scum y wing and one on your rebel y wing i bet that's why they did that okay and here is a title card for the uh, uh fire spray uh remember there's already the uh, uh the boba fett's fire spray title title card but now we have the Andrasta, you can only have one of these. Uh, your upgrade bar gains two additional device upgrade icons. Wow, it doesn't cost anything, but those device upgrades can cost a lot of squadron points, so that can make your the, the total loadout cost on your fire spray very expensive. But then you could load, in theory, three proximity mines or three proton bombs or, or three of the other type of bomb, the name eludes me at the moment. Uh, hey... Now, all of a sudden, the uh, fire spray is kind of a superior bomber to the TIE bomber because it can load more bombs. That's pretty sweet. Okay. Now, let's move on to the uh, secondary weapon. I'm sorry, the turret weapon that comes with this. We may have seen this with the Y-Wing expansion. Auto Blaster Turret. Two damage. You have to be within range one, though. So it's close range attack. Two squadron points. Attack one ship, even a ship outside your firing arc. Your hit results cannot be canceled by defense dice. The defender may cancel critical hit results before hit results. All that means is that um, defense dice can negate critical hit results, but not hit results. Okay, that's how I interpret that. And it doesn't, yeah, that doesn't mean change critical hit results to hit results. That, it just means that hit results stand but not critical hit results if they mitigate it with evasion or, or dice or whatever, okay? And you get two of these. Uh, again, presumably one for the uh, Scum and Villainy Y-Wing and one for the Rebel Y-Wing, okay? And here is the, uh, what I'm calling the luck card that comes with this. It's a Republic credit symbol, okay? Even though it looks like the number seven. Hot Shot Blaster. It's, a, it's an attack, okay? Three attack dice, range one to two, three squadron points. Discard this card to attack one ship, even a ship outside your firing arc. So you can only use this one time a match, okay? That has very limited capabilities, but there is a... It, it's to simulate just a quick shot, like a hip shot, if you will, for your smugglers or your, your Han Solo types or whatever. But um, you can use... this. Isn't, you can use this card on Rebel, Imperial, or Scum and Villainy. Uh, if it has that symbol on the uh, upgrade bar, which I, I think this is the first time we've seen those. The Millennium Falcon might have come with those, but I can't remember. Uh, but there we go. Hey, that's a one-shot use. Now, this comes with a new torpedo upgrade card. Two of them, actually. Bomb loadout. Y-Wing only. Limited. Okay? Again, I think one of these is for Rebel Y-Wing and one of these is for Scum Y-Wing, which is why they included two of these in here. Your upgrade bar gains the device's upgrade icon. Hmm. Well, don't all these have the devices? No, they don't. No, they don't. 
So, this allows your Y-Wing to become a bomber. At no cost. Why not? Why not you include that? Do they all have the luck upgrade? Uh, no. Nope. Nope. Nope, you can't use this on a Y-Wing. I think you can only use this on a Z95. And probably, yeah, you can use this on the Z95. So this would give you one additional, gosh. Oh, okay. You're supposed to use this. Nope. What? Okay. 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 Quite confused. Quite confused because it's Y-Wing only and it's limited. Okay, it's it's a torpedo. It's not a look. I'm I'm I confused myself there. Okay. So w let me uh, just start over. I, I I just wasted the past thirty seconds being confused. Uh, this allows Y wings to become bombers uh, at the expense of one of your torpedo upgrades. So you you lose one tor torpedo, but then you gain a bomb. That's all that does. And I that's probably what I would do right there. Okay, that seems pretty good. Now let's look at the crew members that are added with this expansion pack. And they're each scum only, okay? And we'll start with our old pal Greedo. There he is shooting first in the artwork. Once one, it's scum only, one squadron point cost. The first time you attack each round, and the first time you defend each round, the first damage card dealt is dealt face up. That's, a in, that's an inside joke. All about shooting... F the, it says first three times. Yeah, Greedo shot. For, yeah, I get it. Well played. Uh, let's read it again. Now, whichever ship this is attached to, the first time you, that ship, attack each round, and the first time you, that ship, defend each round, the first damage card dealt is dealt face up. So that's a double-edged sword. That could be good and that could be bad. I probably wouldn't run this one for that reason. Uh, uh, this could... Uh, this could win the game for you, and it could also get you. It could also cause you to lose the match, depending on the, the circumstances. So, okay, outlaw tech, scum only limited. So you can have more than one of these, but not many. And it doesn't really tell me how many. Uh, we'd have to go back and read the limited rules to make a judgment call on that. Two squadron points. After you execute a red maneuver, you may assign one focus token to your ship, in addition to the stress token. Okay, it doesn't say anything about not having stress. So. Well, if you're going to do that, well, there's no reason not to have something like this on it to give you a focus token. That's cool. All right. K4 security droid. Three squadron points, scum only. After executing a green maneuver, you may acquire a target lock. Okay. If, if there's no better uh, pilot car or no better crew member cards, then that's a strong contender. But, I mean, come on. There's, there's got to be better cards than that. Okay. So, now... Oh, man, we've got all these new astromech cards, except it's a different type of symbol. It's not the round-domed R2 astromech. This is, that's an R5 astromech, uh, possibly an R6 even, but um, it's a different type of astromech droid. That I, I, I'm going to have to cons assume they're not compatible with each other, and you have to abide by the, the symbol, okay? So we've got a salvaged, two salvaged astromechs. You can use this on any faction that allows you to load these. Two squadron points. When you are dealt a damage card with the ship trait, you may immediately discard that card before resolving its effect. Then discard this upgrade card. There's, I think there is an astromech counterpart to this that might be the pilot trait rather than the ship trait, if I'm not mistaken. So, okay. Right. Next, this is a named astromech or agromech or whatever. It's called Genius. It's unique. No squadron point cost. If you're equipped with a bomb that can be dropped when you reveal your maneuver, and I think the proximity mine falls into that uh, distinction, you may drop the bomb after you execute your maneuver instead. Hey, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to risk being... Well, now, again, the proximity mine, it doesn't matter. This is a little flexibility right here. This gives you flexibility on when to drop your certain devices, okay? So that's, that's all right. Next, we have another name, R4-B11. Now, an R4 is the taller, you can see in the artwork there, it's the, the tall, the cone-shaped uh, droids. You see one near the beginning of episode four, I believe, on the Death Star. 
uh, three squadron points when attacking. If you have a target lock on the defender, you may spend the target lock to choose any or all defense dice. The defender must re-roll the chosen dice. So if he rolls all evades, use this. Uh, if you have a target lock. It is situational, but... Uh, okay. And next we have a generic R4 aggro mech. Yep, I was right. They call them aggro mechs in this. Two squadron points. You get two of them in this expansion. When attacking, after you spend a focus token, you may acquire a target lock on the defender. Okay. That's cool. Uh, which would allow you... Well, no, you spent the focus token. Well, you could still have spent an evade token. I think... If I'm interpreting this correctly, this would allow you to re-roll all the dice if you needed to, since you just put the target lock on them. Um, doesn't say otherwise. Now, listen, what if if they've changed the rules on the internet back in 2015, and you know, had this long 80-page document? I can't be asked to read through any errata. I, you know, I'm going by what these cards say here and now, okay? Since I'm not playing in any tournaments, and this. This expansion is not even supported anymore, so I'm not fooling with that. But when attacking, after you spend a focus token, you may acquire a target lock on the defender. Um, well, I was going to say rhetorical, hypothetical text beneath. You can immediately spend that target lock to reroll all dice if necessary. Okay? All right. And finally, unhinged astromech, and that is an R5 or an R6. On the artwork, one squadron point. You may treat all three speed maneuvers as green maneuvers. Woo-wee! Uh, th that means you wouldn't get... St oh, golly. This allows you to fly recklessly is what it does. This allows you to do all kinds of neat maneuvers in ships that will allow you to use this particular kind of droid, which uh, seems to be these Y-wings, these scum and villainy Y-wings. Is that it? Yeah, of course, Y-Wings are not that maneuverable anyway, but uh, you can fly around without stress. That's cool. That's very cool. Well, there you go, pal. That is the most wanted expansion pack, and as far as I know, that was all everything that came with it. Boy, it took us a long time to get through this one. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm not sure which uh, expansion we'll look at next time. It will be from this wave, Wave 6, and it will be a scum and villainy ship expansion pack, okay? May the Force be with you. Talk to you soon.